Hey, welcome back to another tutorial on our Java applications in Java Enterprise. In this tutorial, we're going to implement a timed event. So you can see that I have on the screen in front of me the login page. I haven't done anything yet to our app, but what I have added is a message that keeps popping up down here every 10 seconds. And so it says schedule at, and then it gives me the time of day when the uh, message is called. And so you can see it's every 10 seconds listed here on the clock. Secondly, if I click the Submit button, I'm going to uh, wait for another 10 seconds and I should have a one-time message that sh shows up here in the log. And so since it's been about, what, eight, nine, there it is, and I got a timeout. So this will only happen one time after the login. So let's get coding and see how you can create scheduled events. So I'm starting my coding in a project I'm calling Assignment3C-EJB. And so I can see that it's a continuation from the projects that I've done in the past. The first thing we're going to do is inside the business uh, package, we're going to create a timer service. And so it's just going to be a new class. And then we're going to create uh, some events that are automatically triggered. So the name is my timer service and let's finish. The first thing I'm going to do for this class is set it to the uh, status of stateless and we'll do the import for the stateless decorator. Inside the class I'm going to define something under the resource category. So after the resource category we're going to say timer service is the type of object and let's just name it as a lowercase timer service and it looks like the import needs to be done. So the timer service is obviously a, a clock service that allows us to trigger events uh, on a certain interval. I'm going to create another item with an object type called logger. The logger object needs to be imported and so we're looking for java.util.logging as the object. Okay, so the logger object is going to be tied directly to this item here, business dot my timer service. We're going to create a constructor. A timer service should have a method that sets the interval for how often the timer is triggered. So the parameter name is interval. So we have the initial logging uh, constructor and now we have a method called setTimer. We're going to put in two more methods here that will actually respond differently. The first method will respond to a mouse click and so I will tie this to the login button and when the mouse is clicked it will last, uh, have a delay of 10 seconds and then show a message on the screen. So you can see that I need to do some imports here. Let's check the timeout. Let's look at Java EJB as our import. And then for the timer, we should also find something under Java X EJB. Okay, so now this timer can be set. And let's uh, have a logger event happen when the timer is uh, alarmed. Okay, so inside here we can put the message here. I'm going to put an at timeout message in programmatic timer at and then let's put in a time so we're going to have a new object and let's change this to java.util. and there should be a date option here date and so that will print the date when the timer actually was triggered now we want to have this thing triggered when we uh, push the button on the uh, login form so as you remember, the onSubmit command is uh, tied to the login button. So we can now set another event here. So I'll put a comment here what I want to do. Uh, start a timer when the login is clicked. Okay, so to get a timer object here, we're going to have to come back to the top area and do another inject, or let's use EJB for our insertion. And let's type in my timer service and let's call it timer. 
So let's do some imports here, and then we should be able to use the timer. Okay, so now down here on line 35, I'm going to say timer dot. And sure enough, we have a set timer method, and we need to tell it the interval. So I'm going to set it to 5,000 as uh, 5,000 milliseconds. So that means five seconds after I click the button, the timer should be triggered. Let's see what that does when we run it. Okay, so here's the app. It's up and running. I'm going to click the submit button and let's count to five now. One, two, three, four, five. And there it is, timeout in the programmatic session and it tells me exactly when it was run. Let's go back into my timer service. Now I'm going to set a scheduled timer. So this will run regardless of what the user does. So let's type in the word schedule. So the parameters that are going to follow schedule are like this. We type in first of all second and we tell it how many seconds are going to happen between timer events. So I'm going to say star divided by 10. That means whatever the current time is, every 10 seconds will be run. We can also say in which minutes will it run. Well, I'm just going to put in the star there. So it means all minutes are possible. And we can also tell it which hours we want it to run in. So let's go from 0 to 23 hours, which is around the clock. And let's say day of week. And we could say this. We could say something like Monday to Friday. So weekends, nothing will happen on this timer. But Monday to Friday, it'll be working. We could also spe specify the day of month. And let's put in there as any day of the month. And then later, the last option is which months do we want to run this in? So we can specify just January or December or something like that. So not only can we specify months, but you can also say the year. And so I'll say all years are now specified. And lastly, there's another parameter called info, and we'll just call it my timer. Okay, so now we've got ourselves a schedule set. So after the schedule is set in this decorator, we're going to give it a method. Okay, so our method is going to take a timer object and it's called a scheduled timeout. And what happens when the timer is struck again or when the clock is every 10 seconds? Let's do another logger message. And let's put in a text message. Let's say at scheduled uh, timeout timer triggered at and let's put in here another Java time. So let's go new, new Java dot util dot date and that should tell us when the schedule um, happens. Okay now that I've got all this typed here I can go to an import statement here. It says insert or import schedule. Let's see I've got an error here. It says uh, there's an attribute wrong. Let's go look at our work here. Oh how do you spell minute? Uh, let's try that again. M-I-N-U-T-E. Alright so down here at the in the uh, console log I'm getting a schedule trigger. It says triggered at and it gives me the time. I should see that every once in a while and then when I click the submit button it will fire off a welcome message and then it should show me another timeout. So five seconds after that. It looks like another program is running in my web server that is running a scheduled timer. I have two different timer messages so I have to go back and figure out which uh, which app is not supposed to be there. But that's pretty much the, uh, the code that we need to run. So keep this uh, technique around in your mind because if you ever have to create an application that does some kind of a scheduled process in the night, uh, this is probably what you'll be using if you're in Java Enterprise.